Hi guys, Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Plastery. Today, I want to answer a question. A lot of you guys see me doing color coats, applying, say, cementitious finishes or acrylic finishes. The number one question I get when I do that is, what's the difference between a painted surface and, say, a color coat surface? This is a perfect example. We were just about ready to finish this up, and I thought, man, that question that folks keep asking me, I could explain it well here. They did two new windows because they're installed in a bathroom. Um, say, for example, guys, this right here is a, a color coat cementitious finish. When were color coats started? Well, this company right here, La Habra, they started in 1926, followed by Western in like 34, and other companies followed suit because it's a good product. This house, I don't know how old it is, but I would say 70 to 80 years old. If I put it on Google, it'll tell me the exact age of this. But I'm looking at this finish right here. It's a smooth finish. And how do you know if a house is, say, uh, color-coded? Well, you know because, like a brick, you ever wet a brick, guys, and see how it goes dark? Or a, a red tile roof like we have all over here. If you wet them tiles or wet the brick, say, for example, that you have, it darkens. What does that mean? That means it's maintenance-free. This is white, okay. This is a white uh, uh, maintenance-free finish. That, that's why it's not showing too clear down there. It's probably crystal white that they applied here. And I'd say probably about oh, uh, 60, 70 years ago, maybe 80, I don't know. Uh, but I do know this, guys. Okay, the example was why paint versus a cementitious finish. Okay, if the house is built after 1926, you apply a maintenance-free finish. That means you never have to touch it again. It will never peel off, guys. It'll discolor in a few ages or a, a few years, but it will never, ever come off. Now, look at the paint. The paint is coming off in various sections, and down there is a really good example. And we are on the side that gets no sun, guys. It gets very little sun. The other sides, the paint is blistering and peeling off quite a bit. So, if it were me, guys, I'd save that, say, for a house this size, $10,000 to paint every 6 to 10, 12 years, and I'd live with the color. Say the color here again, I think it's crystal white, or um, it's a light tan. Anyway, this will never come off, but sometimes you say, gee, I don't like the color anymore, so you decide to paint. If you don't like the color anymore, guys, weigh the benefits of a color coat maintenance-free finish versus painting. And those benefits are this never peels off. It'll last two, three hundred years. This you'll have to repaint every six to eight. And I want to be careful. I don't want to step on anybody's toes and criticize anybody. I don't know who painted this, nor do I know when. But I got a pretty good idea when and how and all that. But I'll keep that out because, again, I don't want to step on toes. We have... I have three finishes here. This one is Santa Barbara. This is a 2030 sand, or I'm sorry, a 3030 sand. Then we have the other finish, which is uh, 2030 and 1620. One is very coarse and one is medium. Doubtful you'll be able to see these. But anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these back together because the point I was trying to make has been made. Yes. I went ahead and I browned this out a little while ago because it's going to get painted anyhow. And what I did, guys, is I used a hard rubber float and I compressed it. Hard rubber. Compress it. What does that do? That compacts it and compresses it because I can do a two-coat finish, guys, and steel trowel it to match this. But if I did that, it would defeat the purpose of what I'm trying to show you. Here, we're using a Santa Barbara color coat now. And this Santa Barbara will do all the patchwork. Okay, say for example, Santa Barbara's smooth mission finish. Now I can go hard steel trowel with, without worrying about, say, uh, this patch hairlining. Could it hairline when it dries? Absolutely. Every patch can, guys. I've had folks call me and say, you know, uh, did a patch and it got a couple hairlines. It's normal. But what we're doing right now, I'm trying to minimize the hairline uh, 
cracking issue, that's why I went ahead and did the scratch. The brown, let that cure. Hard rubber floated it. And now what I'm doing, guys, is the third coat. And the third coat, I can hard steel trowel it without worrying too much about it hair lining. That's a complicated issue, Adam. I'm not sure if a lot of you folks could understand that who watch our DUI stuff. I'm sure a lot of the stuff of guys who watch what I'm doing right now understand it quite clearly. When you hard steel trowel a wall as I'm doing now, it should be a third coat. Okay, I'm gonna, I already did this little area here because the stuff is in my way, the scaffold. I will go ahead and finish this off. And I'll explain one last detail, guys, about patchwork on a Santa Barbara smooth mission finish. Because I do get asked often, hey, gee, my house is Santa Barbara, can you match the finish? And I'll say, yeah, I can match it. However, even with this 3030 sand, which is the lightest sand they make, you're still going to see just a tiny bit of sand or aggregate because it has sand in it, guys, and you could only sand or apply this and trowel down so smooth. This is not taping mud. If it was taping mud, I could make it like glass. Any of the veneer plasterings inside, I could make like glass if I chose to, but this has sand in it, which is 30-30 fine sand. Okay, when you're doing something like this, this is a smooth trial finish now, so I'll give this a smooth trial finish, but the joint, the perimeter, and this is what I'm always telling people over the telephone. I can match it, but the perimeter has sand in it, so when this new sand goes over this existing sand, you'll sometimes see it. So what we do is we take a sponge float like this and hit the perimeter edges just lightly, just to feather in as best as you can because it has sand in it. Here, I'll do the whole thing once more and get it as close as possible Noticing it does have sand in it. And there you go. There's, there's the best you can do with a Santa Barbara smooth mission finish with patchwork. And as I said earlier, you guys make the decision if the benefits of painting outweigh the, the fact that you have a maintenance free finish. And even if you have a maintenance free finish, oftentimes, guys, you'll have to paint your window trim again or your eaves. But if I were you, I'd paint the eaves in the window trim and leave that maintenance free finish alone even if you don't like the color. Anyhow guys, uh, my name is Kirk, Jason on the camera. We thank you for watching and as usual, we'll see you guys on the next one. Once again folks, we thank you for watching and I really enjoy all your comments. If you guys like this video, please click the like button down below and also if you enjoy what we do, subscribe to our channel so we can keep making these videos for you. My name is Kirk and Jay. We thank you for watching, and from the entire Giordano family, we'll see you on the next one.